everyone welcome back to my channel i really hope you guys enjoyed that intro that is going to be my intro for all of my halloween videos it turned out so cute and i made it myself but as you can see from the thumbnail i am going to be doing my yearly easy halloween nail designs tutorial and this year i am elevating it a little bit for you guys so let's jump right into it uh, we are starting off with a dotting tool you're going to need three brushes a cleanup brush a smaller a liner brush and then a longer liner brush so this is a cleanup a nine millimeter liner brush and then a 12 millimeter liner brush and then this is just a bonus but i'm adding this into this nail that i'm making it's some glow in the dark powder that you can get from amazon um it comes with a bunch of colors it is in my amazon storefront in case you're interested in that but i'm going to be doing a mummy nail but it is going to be um super easy and beginner friendly for anybody that has trouble with something like this so i'm going to start off with the black base um i'm using nails by dev black gel polish and the thing is that you can use any type of black gel polish that you have on hand it does not to be need to be any specific one and then i'm grabbing some of the yellow glow in the dark powder with some yellow and white gel polish mixing it all together and i'm making the color for the eyeballs so i'm just using my dotting tool to mix it all together basically Basically with this glow in the dark powder you can make any set glow in the dark that you want you can add any glow in the dark elements to literally anything so it's really really handy especially for halloween time if you like more festive type of nails this is definitely something that you pro would probably want to buy and just to have on hand even if you do gel x even if you do acrylic nails this is something good for your clients or customers i'm grabbing a little bit of black and mixing it in with a little bit of yellow and white and i'm using this as the color for the mummy's um little I don't know <laughs> mummy wrap so you're gonna go into kind of a bunch of different directions with the long liner brush you can literally make it as messy as you want it is so easy and simple to make this look good it is definitely beginner friendly and easy for people that don't really know how to draw um, you don't need to know how to do anything fancy with this and as you can see for the eyes all I did was use the dotting tool I just used the dotting tool and basically created two circles and they do not need to be perfect circles. They could be oval, they could be circle, they could be any shape you absolutely want. It's still going to look cute. And then for the lines, you can make them crisscross, zigzag, whatever type of lines you want to do. I literally just had fun with it and did whatever. It took me less than like 30 seconds to do this. And then now I'm grabbing the other side of the dotting tool. It's the smaller side and I'm just doing two eyeballs in the very center. And this is just the black part of the eyes and I want him to look a little more cute. So I'm going ahead and making his eyes the like the black part or the iris i'm making it bigger because the bigger you make it the cuter it looks the smaller i feel like the, the creepier it looks that's just my personal opinion and just to add some more details i'm just grabbing some black gel polish on the long liner brush and adding some detail to the little bandages um this is just to kind of add a little more dimension it's honestly so easy and then because i love matte the matte look i'm going to show you guys with the matte top coat and i'm going to show you how it looks like glossy as well so this is how it looks at first i'm going to make sure everything's smooth another thing i forgot to mention if you are a beginner you want to make sure that you are curing everything after each layer so we're done with that one very nice and easy i'm sorry if i'm talking a little fast you could slow down the video if you absolutely have to but um yeah so now i'm going ahead and i'm grabbing a milky white gel polish so you can use any milky white i'm using my favorite one i get it on amazon and i am doing a few coats of that and we are going to be doing a realistic type of spider so it is my first time showing you guys how to do a spider like this we are upgrading this year you guys we are not doing the simple spiders like the ones i used to do also um these type of spiders you can even make them smaller and they look so realistic and if you need to do a big spider this is definitely a way better way to do it and i'm teaching you some tri tips and tricks to make it look really realistic um, so you're gonna start off with kind of like an oval lesson type of shape it almost look like looks like one of Jack Skellington's eyeballs if you've ever done one of those like not quite circle and not quite oval like in the middle and it doesn't need to be perfect as well it could be totally circle if you want it to be um, so more circle is better than more oval though so that's a tip and you're gonna be starting out with the legs so something that I never noticed as you guys saw probably from the inspo photos of the spider is the spiders do have like joints connecting each little part of the leg I know that sounds so icky and nasty but it's the truth uh, so we're gonna create kind of like that joint type of look with these legs so adding the little type of joint like right there I don't know how to explain it but you're gonna basically lift it up a little um, put more pressure down on your brush and then lift it up small to make it smaller and as you can see, it makes the leg look really realistic. So we're doing four legs on each side. And I'm going ahead and just adding uh, the legs and make it look like the spider's almost dangling in a way. Uh, that's the look I was going for. You can make it look like it's on a surface, whatever you want. 
and um, make the legs as long or as small as you want. Also, you can make it a mutant spider if you want. You can even add more legs if you wanted to, like I did last year. But it's completely up to you. Um, and whatever you want to do, like let your imagination run wild. And this part is just all about connecting. So I don't know how exactly how many quote unquote joints the spider has. But I just went ahead and kind of eyeballed it looking at the inspo. You can look up realistic spider drawing on Pinterest and kind of get some inspo from there as well. But this is just some tips I'm giving you guys to create a more realistic looking spider. Something like this on a chrome type of cyber nail set type of look would be super cool if you're into like the cyber nails or the nails that are super trendy right now. I feel like a spider could be really in and you can also make the body look 3D by using 3D gel as well. So that's another tip. Um, and yeah, so we're just going ahead with the legs and I am basically trying to make the front very first legs and the very last legs longer than the two middle ones so i'm trying to make them a little longer just because um i think spiders naturally have longer legs in the front and longer legs in the back i'm not sure but i'm pretty sure they do so i'm just trying to do that and basically trying to make the legs look super icky honestly the legs are pretty thick if you want it to look even more realistic you can make the legs a little bit thinner and it will look super cool so um yeah here i am doing that and then I've decided that this leg was a little bit too curved for my liking, so I'm grabbing the cleanup brush. This is where the cleanup brush is going to come in handy. That's why I mentioned that you're going to need it, and it could be absolutely any cleanup brush that you have on hand. And you're going to grab a little bit of acetone and clean up your spider. And I did uh, cure the base first, so you're going to cure the base, cure it in between every layer. So if you base coat, cure. If you apply um, a color at the base, cure. Once you do a leg, cure. When you're doing any type of hand painted art you want to cure after every single step because if like something were, were to happen and you accidentally no, like uh, make a little mistake or like nudge another part of another thing you're drawing for example right here if i messed up it would be so hard for me to have to go clean up clean it if my legs were not cured so you want to make sure that you are curing in between each layer if you're a beginner just because you might not have the practice yet to be able to just freehand the whole thing without messing up in case you need to go clean up like I do, it's perfect for you to cure in between so that you have everything nice and cured and it's stuck in place so you don't mess it up. And then now I'm grabbing a little bit of white and I'm adding highlight to the spider. This is going to make it super realistic. I added some onto the body. You can use the milky white for the body part. I just totally forgot to do that. And I grabbed a more opaque white and then I'm grabbing the, um, putting it on where the like the quote unquote joints of the spider's legs would be. Making it look like that's the highest part of the leg. So it makes it look like the light is hitting that part, if that makes sense. And then this is really going to just make the set pop out so much. Adding shadowing is the best thing you could do when you're doing a spider. So grab any, any type of gray color. If you don't have a gray, mix a little bit of black and white. If you don't have a black and white, mix a little bit of... Or if you don't have a gray, you can also mix a little bit of... Tiny bit of black with some top coat and it makes the perfect shading color. So that is what I'm doing here. Adding some shading really brings it together and I'm just adding shading underneath every single leg kind of in the same type of shape I did the actual leg in but it doesn't need to be as perfect because it's just a shadow. You know that shadows can get distorted and this is what it is looking like. It is so so cool. It looks actually so real and kind of gives me the ick but it's okay. Um, it's like so icky because it looks real but I love it and I really want to teach you guys how to step up your hand painted art in case you guys are having trouble. And this is how it looks glossy and then that's how it looks matte. And I wanted to add some gloss onto the body to make it look even more icky like if it's glossy. So I went ahead and added some top coat to it. But like I said if you're like down you could totally add some 3D gel. Like the one that's super trendy right now. And you will have some really really cool 3D spider artwork. So that's another tip that I think is really great. And um, yeah, I'm basically just adding top coat on the legs as well. I wanted the mat to be the base and then like the actual spider to be glossy. So here's that. Um, and then now we're going to be moving on to the next nail. And the next nail is going to be some really cute little ghosties. So I did start out by going ahead and painting a orange jelly color. It looks almost red on camera, but in person it's very orange. So it is an orange color and then I'm going ahead and adding some ghosts. So these ghosts are not going to be so, so cute. They're more, a little bit more spookier ones. So I'm going ahead with white gel polish and I'm just going to be making more of an elongated body and basically no arms. So it's not going to look so cute. It's going to look more real, I guess, even though I know this is not real. Like, you know what I mean? Like, 
um, not so cartoonish, but so I'm going ahead and adding the body and making it long and adding kind of like a frayed type of ghost bottom type of look. I don't really know how to explain it so good, but this is just going to elevate your ghost a little bit instead of doing the really, really simple ones. I did the simple ones too. I still love them. And for QT sets, I love those ones better, but just in case you wanted a, a tutorial on how to do these type, I wanted to make these for you guys. It was my first time making them. Um, so... This is kind of like, I actually wanted to talk to you guys about something while my video is just blank because I'm curing the nail right here. Um, I am making a few different versions of this video for you guys this year. I'm going to be doing a beginner and then I'm all, like a beginner drawing like this one. And then I'm going to also do a uh, character version, like a uh, nail tutorial characters for beginners. And then I'm also going to be doing a 3D Halloween tutorial for beginners. So a bunch of 3D art. So things like that and I'm excited so stay tuned for that if you guys like these type of Halloween videos. I have more coming and also for fall as well. I did not forget about everyone that doesn't like Halloween because I love fall. It is one of my favorite times of year. So I'm also going to be doing videos like these but fall version instead. Um, and I'm sorry if you guys think it's a little early for these for the Halloween video. But I felt like I had to get it out early this year because I just feel like everybody's already doing Halloween nails. So yeah I'm sorry for rambling but... Basically right there what I did is I added a little long mouth and I don't know why I went back to cover it up. I actually love the way it looks. It looks kind of more spooky but I did cover it because I felt like I did not like it um, and I don't know why I did that like honestly. So I wanted to leave in my errors also just to show you guys that nobody's perfect. Like you guys might compare yourself to my art like occasionally or somebody else's and you can't compare because everybody struggles one way or another. Like right here, I did not know what direction I wanted to go in because I was getting inspo from like these creepy ghosts on Pinterest and I didn't like the way that um, I was making it. Like I felt like I couldn't make it look exactly like that because the picture was really blurry. So I just went ahead and added some long droopy eyes that looked kind of scary and then a little mouth and I really liked the, this look a little bit better. So yeah, but it still looked cute the other way also. So this is kind of showing you guys also two ways that you can do it. If you want to make the eyes small and the mouth long or if you want to make the eyes long and the mouth small if that makes sense so that's what i did there and i was curing in between each layer and then i wanted to add something in the background i felt like it looked a little bit simple so i wanted to go in with some like fog or clouds looking type like fog or cloud looking vibe so i went ahead with a little bit of gel polish on my brush mixed with a little bit of alcohol so on my, on my desk at all times, I always have alcohol 90% or something like that, 90 I think, and then I always have acetone as well. So for this one, you want to use a little bit of alcohol, um, get the white polish, and then kind of spread it out. It's going to be like almost like a marble effect basically. And I can do more uh, videos on like I, an in-depth probably like short video, maybe on shorts, on how to do like fog or clouds because I have an even better method that I could show you guys. So um, I think I'm going to be doing that for my YouTube shorts. But yeah, here I am just doing this and it looks really cool. It kind of gave it a little bit of something else in the background just so that it is not so plain and simple. So yeah, if you guys want more tutorials with even more simpler designs, because these are simple, but I know that I can make even more simpler ones. So if you guys want simpler designs, like how to draw a simple uh, creepy tree or like a simple creepy bat, like things like that, uh, let me know and I could definitely do that for you guys. Because honestly, Halloween designs are one of my favorite to do. They're so fun. And I also have a lot of plans for Christmas also. So yeah, those are just some of my favorites. And um, now what I'm going to be doing after this is just going in again with the matte. But honestly, I did like this one glossy a little bit better. But um, yeah, so once that's done and you have it how you like it, you're just going to basically use the cleanup brush for that. And then you're going to go ahead and just kind of swirl it around, kind of figure out what you like. And this is what it looks like. Honestly, it would have looked even better if I would have done that first. But I didn't think it was going to look so simple. But now I'm doing another very simple nail. Very easy design that you guys can do for either fall or Halloween. So I'm grabbing some orange gel polish. This polish is just one from Nails by Dev. And I'm just doing uh, two coats of that. And I'm going to be grabbing a black gel and the shorter brush now. And you're going to be doing a really easy pumpkin shape. So a really open M. Um, and then you're going to be connecting it from one side of the nail to the other side and then you're going to be doing these little ridges in the middle. You're going to need a total of four lines. So two and then two on the outside if that makes sense. Um, I really recommend you guys try this out. You can even incorporate this for fall designs. 
um making this for fall is just going to be very cute you can even add glitter you can make the pumpkin all glittery you can make the pumpkin 3d you can make it a whole different color literally whatever you want to do and it is very nice and simple and then i'm also going to be showing you guys the tips and tricks for a spider web right there at the top of the nail um just some tips for a perfect spider web because it is honestly something that you might not think about at first um and it is like you know there's things that I feel like people don't say when they're like they could show you how to make a spider web but you need to know like the actual uh tips and tricks so you're gonna need a long brush the long brush is key for this um because you're gonna be able to create the really nice longer lines so they're gonna be very nice and smooth like not smooth but like thinner because you need to make sure you have a little bit of product on your brush and make sure you make the lines nice and even and a longer brush is more forgiving if you use a shorter brush it's going to be really harder for that. The shorter brush comes in handy right now. So you're going to need two brushes for the perfect spider web. Um, a shorter brush is going to help you create these little little lines way easier. I don't know what these are called, but they basically connect the lines together. Um, this adds the detail of the spider web together. So adding the detail of the spider web is just like everything. And this little brush is perfect for that. This specific brush, in case you guys are interested, is the Nails by Dev 9mm. And I'm going ahead and just adding the lines. And yeah, the little brush helps you have more control for this part of the spider web. The long brush is definitely what you need for the longer lines because it's just going to make it better. And I added a few extra ones, and this is what it's looking like. And then I also added some highlight to the pumpkin to really tie it all in together. This is going to help your pumpkin stand out no matter what color you make it. Add some white highlights, and it just really brings it all together and yeah you guys that's it for this video i decided to put the nails on for you guys so you guys could see what they look like they are such cool accent nails i really hope you guys are able to incorporate this into your halloween sets this year and let me know down below if you guys are excited for the next video because the next one is going to be a good one so yeah um that's it for this one and i really hope you guys liked it please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i will see you in my next one bye